Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming back uh, in time. We are now starting with the pitch session. The pitch session is really an important session because, as you know, the real work, the meat of Celtic Plus is happening in projects. And you've seen in the last session how much impact societal and uh, economically such projects can have. So we would all like to invite you to think about possibilities for projects and to propose projects. And the start of that, the very first start of that is to think about project ideas. You know, Celtic Plus is uh, bottom up and you can propose anything which has to do with ICT and telecommunications. So the first step is to think about project ideas and to see which partners do I have already and which partners do I need. And this is why this is such an important session because now we have uh, 15, actually it became 15 because we got a few from another session, 15 proposals, pitches, very short pitches, where we will go through and where the partners, potential partners for potential projects will present their ideas and ask for additional partners and show you what they would do. So please, please do talk to them afterwards if you, have, if you want to participate in those pitches or in those project proposals. Now, let's start right away because uh, time is short and I know we are between you and the lunch. So I'm, I would like to ask all the pitches that we are very short, so you should try to do it below five minutes if possible. And we start with the first one, which is an on-demand secure isolation users club proposal by Orange. Hello, um, I'm Jean-Philippe Jean Vary from Orange. I'm working in the research, security research department in charge of end-to-end -end security and dependability for large network and 5G. And uh, I I am the exception because I am not calling for partner because the project is already uh, labelized and uh, finalized. But uh, as we want to develop a new security scheme, we want we propose to industry to join us through a user club. And then I will try to explain uh, very shortly what we want to do with this project. This project is uh, based on five countries. We have uh, 21 partners uh, and a large budget. And we want to focus and to deliver a new security scheme based on minimal, uh, the minimum security uh, needs to achieve uh, isolation in every, uh, in every environment. And uh, our target is to, to deliver a model which is not based on hardware or software, but the both uh, aspect. And we want to, to offer each uh, supplier to be able to, do, to dispatch secret objectives between hardware and software as they want, but the global envelope has to stay the same in order to achieve interoperability. Then uh, we, we clearly um, target minimal properties for isolation in order to allow whatever third party to, give, uh, to obtain an access and a certified isolated environment on whatever equipment. This will be based on formal proof, security formal proof, common criteria scheme, new common criteria scheme uh, that will mix together hardware and software aspect. And uh, we want to be really dynamic in order to access uh, to the needs of uh, the new coming market and IoT, 5G and, C, uh, and also, in which we want to dynamically modify some aspect of the infrastructure. Then, uh, uh, to do that, we will deliver a lot of things and we will push, uh, 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 how do we say that? Uh, open, um, open source, uh, uh, result in open source. We will publish all of our results. And the, the, my, my proposal today is to, to offer, as we have uh, finished the, the project uh, definition, to offer uh, each industrial or supplier of technic, technic supplier, technical uh, equipment supplier, to be able to join the project in some uh, user club uh, instance in which we can share uh, in advance and phase every result regarding security model, formal proof, and uh, what we can uh, have, uh, what we can discuss if it is uh, acceptable or not by industry. Then we target and we, we open this uh, user club to equipment manufacturers, uh, CC and security labs in every country. M2M entities and for IoT M2M and we want to share for the 5G network infrastructure. It means that an equipment could be shared between several operators and service suppliers with a strong 
strong uh, isolation uh, pro properties and uh, remote attestation and all, uh, in particular telecom industry for uh, the new network uh, feature like SDN and FV. Then feel free to contact me and uh, if you want to join this uh, user club and uh, work with us during the ODSI project that normally has to start the first of Yuli this year, I will be very happy to, to embed you in the project. Thank you, thank you very much, Jean-Philippe. Uh, you did it below five minutes, and I promised everybody who did it do, does it below five minutes, there is, then there, there is then time for one question. Is there a question? <laughs> if, yeah, Chuck. Yes, I, I just wanted to, to check something. I mean, this is a project which, has, which is about to start, and you are not looking for additional partners. Is that yeah, correct? Yes. Huh? Okay. We have uh, finalized, labelized, and we are looking, we open the project to other uh, industry members, but it will be only part of a user club in order to share in advance of phase our result. Now, this was actually a good one because it clarified uh, what the status is. I think this is really important that the speakers uh, state what the status of this is. Do you look for additional partners or is it already something starting? Uh, and what is the benefit if, you, if others start? Thank you very much again. Second on the list is uh, VTT, Sami, from f on, on network functional virtualization and edge computing for Internet of Things. Now, Internet of Things is really something important. <coughs> okay, hello everyone. <coughs> My name is Sami Rupan and I, I work for v VTT in Finland and I have this project idea about this NFV and mobile edge computing that is applied to IoT. <coughs> So, so in, in short, you have heard that uh, the reality is that, that the scalability and, and this uh, deployment of this IoT hardware and services will be an issue in, in near future with these billions of, of new uh, devices introduced into the network and, and, and producing lots of traffic and, and data. So <clears throat> uh, what, what we want to do is to, to ease and this this to uh, and and set up a project to look for some partners that would be interested or, on doing doing some research or, on this this issue on <coughs> on, on this uh, combining software networking and, and cloud computing and and these existing operations and business support systems into I IoT. So <coughs> the the issue is that 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 we are interested. Is, is how, how this existing Etsy's NFV and, and mobile edge computing uh, concepts can, can be applied to, to this IoT infrastructure and, and services. So there, there's some, some issues that, that we, we, we want to look for. So how to efficiently, for example, handle and, and process the IoT traffic, uh, uh, for example, in the cloud or network edge, depending on where it's uh, makes most uh, reason for where it's, where it's feasible to do that. And also, <coughs> when we have this, this NFV and, and this edge computing concepts, yeah, it uh, eases the, the, the scaling up and, and down the services, and, and you, you can do the processing already on the, on the network edge, for example, and not in the cloud. And, and in that way, you can decrease the amount of traffic in, in the core networks and, and this. <coughs> and then, then there's also this kind of an IoT virtualization concept that, that maybe might help on, on turning these legacy systems to IoT capable. There's lots of, lots of uh, old process systems that cannot be turned into IoT, so, so maybe we can virtualize those processes and sensors and systems, and, and by that, we might make them IoT capable. So what we are hoping that the outcome is that <coughs> we have a flexible, this kind of an IoT deployment and operation that, that is common in, in the telco networks, the, the NFV management and orchestration that is now, now 
now existing there and lots of standardization is done there. And also we are <coughs> hoping to, to see kind of an open innovation platform that, that other people can use and, and, and industry can, can take it, take it and, and utilize, and for example, SMEs. And, and also the, the impact, impact, hopefully, is the, that we have some new innovative IoT services. We, we get some new kind of service providers and, and new business models. And, and well, the, the schedule for this kind of proposal, it's, it's quite in an early phase, this, this idea, but we have a target for, for this next autumn 2015 call. And so everyone that is interested can contact me. And this is the partners that we are looking for. So we need some IoT platform and service providers. We, we need some telcos and mobile operators and some cloud service providers and, and especially expertise on NFV and software networking. <coughs> and we hope to see kind of a balanced consortium. So there's academia, there's industry and SMEs from different countries. So if, if you are interested about this, you can, you can contact me and I, I can also forward your interest to, to proper uh, persons at VTT. There's some, this is not only my idea, but it's uh, basically idea of my colleagues and that is really an expert in, in this issue. Thank you very much, Sami. <laughs> Would be time for one very brief question, if there is one, yes, please. Uh, hello, uh, uh, my name is Ali Erkan from Özeyn University, Turkey. Uh, do you have any use case for your, uh, I mean, uh, as an application of once you uh, enable this thing? Well, for example, if, if you consider that you, you have some kind of application that requires low latency, uh -huh. so it might make it more feasible to process the data on the edge of the network, no, or no, to, to carry it in, in a, into the cloud. For example, some uh, critical smart grid applications. Uh, my question was, are you planning this to be a part of your project or? Uh, yeah, yeah. So the application is, is, is a part of your project? Yeah, we, we of course need some app, app, real world applications that uh -huh. it, it's not useful to do any research yeah. if, if nobody would be using. But yeah. We should talk about it offline. Okay. Please Thanks. do, please do. That is exactly the meaning of the exercise. Uh, and you have meanwhile realized that the last sheet on those presentations is the most important one because that's the one where the contact info is and all those presentations have the contact info in the last sheet and they will all be on our web after this event so you can all go through them contact the people you want to contact and talk to them that that is the outcome we want to have from this session here please now the next one is really a very a very special presentation not because it's spectrum databases but because this is probably the colleague with the longest trip to here is coming from South Africa. <laughs> Please, he's here. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Fusama Makrea, and uh, I am working with uh, CSIR uh, in South Africa. And since this is five minutes, so I just want to say uh, why we have gone to the Spectrum databases. The main reason for going to Spectrum databases is that we have found out that there is a lot of spectrum, especially in the rural areas in, in Africa where we can utilize for broadband communication. And we have tested that, that, that uh, networks based on spectrum databases and also spectrum sharing using the TV wide space networks. And we have now two test beds running in South Africa. And one of them is in suburban where you have many TV broadcasting stations. And another one is one we are, we are now running also in the rural areas. And we have connected 10 schools in, in the Cape Town area and around five schools in the Limpopo in the rural area with over 25,000 students now benefiting from this network. This is actually based on a test license. So, but the test license period when it is finished all the schools protested that we're going to stop this, the network. So this is giving you know, a real social value for the communities in, this, in these areas. And it's a network that, that has to be supported in, in many 
aspects, both in the 4G or 5G, and how do they exist with the, with the, with the networks. So that's the reason I also raised many of the questions about spectrum sharing in the, in the previous sessions. So this is the main, the main, the main uh, message for this. So the CSIR is a 70 years in institution, actually. It was, it was, it is orga so we are celebrating, actually, in October, the, the 70 years celebration of this organization. We have several type of research units. Uh, the one that we are, we are working on ICT, R&D, is the, the Meraka Institute. And we also do some safety and security and modeling and digital sciences. So dynamic spectrum sharing. Uh, it's very important, not only for rural uh, areas in, 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 in the world, but also to be able to, to, to cater for the IoT demand that we have. We have 50 billion, the question that I'm raising is, we have 50 billion uh, devices that we want to connect. We have the next billion of broad broadband com connectivity that we need. In emerging markets, there are one billion people who are waiting to be connected to the broadband. And there is also 50 billion devices <coughs> and 7 billion cellular connectivity. So this, this requires a new form of spectrum agility, spectrum uh, allocation and management. But that's one, one thing that is missing in the 5G proposal also that we saw today. Because we need to have spectrum agility, spectrum sharing to be able to cater for the 50 billion devices. 50 billion devices cannot be connected with wires. They have to be connected wirelessly. They require spectrum for that. So that is the reason we are promoting this. And we, hand, we have now developed a spectrum database covering the whole of South Africa. If you go to the exhibition, we have actually a poster which shows how, many, how much spectrum available in each region in South Africa. So we are using that one to build networks for rural and even for, for urban areas where we need IoT services like smart cities. So this is also one of the, 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 the things that, that prompt us to go to, to this type of new technologies. Because this is a travesty, when, what we see. We have uh, fiber optics, cables, submarine cables coming here with several hundreds of gigabytes arriving at the ports of Africa, but we can't take them in to inland to connect all the communities. Why? Because we are only limited of thinking the Yesterday, the Google lady said, you know, we're thinking only cars have to go with one lane or uh, services have to come through the cellular connectivity only. We have to think a little bit wider with different type of network technologies. The one that, 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 that has been presented, is, for example, in the morning, the, the wireless mesh extension to, in Tanzania is one type of technology, but there are even more using spectrum sharing. So we, we really need to think a little bit beyond, beyond cellular technology, cellular. Uh, uh. So we have now a spectrum database that we have developed for the whole of South Africa, and we are getting a number of requests also now from other African countries. We have developed now for Ghana. We have already tested that, that uh, database for Ghana. There is Botswana, there is Tanzania. There is Malawi, that all of them are looking for this because they think that connecting communities in rural areas is a very important uh, economic development uh, intervention. So that has been shown by the World Bank report that the GDP increases for everybody connected to 1% well, to of the population connected, the GDP increase is coming. So we, we did that and we are now uh, testing also several uh, of such uh, test beds using TVY spaces enabled by the spectrum databases. So we have several partners in this uh, project. We have the uh, Independent Communications Authority of South Africa and the Department of Science and Technology who is funding us uh, the projects. And we have also other companies, local companies, plus also uh, other R&D partners uh, also, the testbed uh, consortium also involving Tenet, Redline, Google, Microsoft, and other com companies. Uh, and we have also um, 
the expertise. Now we we're trying to develop not only the 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 technology, but also we need to develop, as we heard in the morning, the capacity of the local institutions. So we are running a number of capacity building workshops, both in South Africa and outside of South Africa too. And we believe that the, we request partners to, to see how future wireless networks with 5G, uh, uh, how do they integrate this spectrum agility and other networks to get integrated to that in the IoT area and the cloud-based services to spectrum is also something that we have we are looking, and also the regulatory and business development is something that we, we are looking for partners. And uh, also, how do we license these technologies to rural operators that we are, we are looking? Mm -hmm. So in, in the end, uh, any technology will be assessed by the future, you know, whether it has improved the life of a pe people or not. So that is my, my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Fizia. Chuck wants to say something. So I already uh, mentioned that a little earlier, but I want to, to repeat it. Uh, South African partners are, can be incorporated in any of the Celtic Press projects huh? because South Africa is now a Eureka associated country. All right, so the message is clear. Thank you, Jacques. That, that, that was maybe really important. Thank you very much, see you again. I think we have to move on. We have uh, another many to do. Uh, just whilst I'm changing the slide, uh, a show of hands, is anybody interested to think about joining this project or this idea? Probably need to think a bit more about this. Now, next one is um, Businesses in More Than One Language by Josef Brunner from Naviti GmbH. Please, Josef. Hello, my name is Josef Brunner, and I'm the founder of NaTV. Uh, we are a translation agency, and we automated in our software all the project management of a translation agency. So, we are looking for partners who want to simplify their language issues. Um, it's our core business is that clients find native translators, hire them, and get all the admin stuff done. So, for creating an offer in any kind of system, in say CMS, we can integrate via REST API, web services. Uh, it takes us two seconds. We have 2,100 translators and provide 420 language combinations at the moment. Uh, it's fast and simple. There's direct contact with the translator possible. And we are a certified translation agency. Um, our software manages everything from hiring to building within the host. Uh, CMS. As of today, we even provide uh, multi-currency, so you can even uh, provide uh, offer local currencies. As I already mentioned, it takes two seconds to get an offer. It's uh, the contact uh, to the system is via REST API. Uh, you have full order management, customer service, and we can do the billing if you want. Uh, we provide a lot of file formats, and we have also. Uh, translation memory, and I would summarize, summarize it as computer-aided translation technology uh, and statistic, statistical machine translation. It's kind of Google Translate, but it's not as it is. So it's really we are working with human translators. Yeah, we are looking for partners we would like to enter into projects. Uh, it's about uh, the improve the user experience of your systems, as if, for example, as uh, people using your software outcomes can even within the system hire the translation. Yeah, and it's, uh, I think, today uh, also clear that English, okay, it's the main language, but it's also that uh, to get more higher acceptance by the users, uh, we have to provide the native language of the user. Yeah, we're looking for any kind of e-commerce software, CMS or cloud services, or if you have uh, issues with international clients or experience with online platforms. We have the full uh, description of the REST web services uh, well online on nativity.com slash connect. Yeah, we are, as I said, we are a startup. We are now since four years 
working from Vienna, and we have already quite a range of clients. I hope some of the names you know, at least Siemens. Yeah, I would be happy to join the project, uh, but to be honest, we are at the moment just uh, entered a Eurostars project, and so we are a bit, as we are a small company, we are a bit limited with our capacities, of course. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joseph. So, a very brief question, if there is any. Then, thanks again, Joseph. Then we will move quickly to the next one, which is a well-known collaborator in Celtic Plus, Oscar Chabrera, with a traceable spots video proposal. Please, Oscar. present uh, traceable sports videos. First I'm going to present who is Billings. Billings is a, tech, a company, a technology company, that helps viewers discover what there is inside an online video. The idea is you have what you see on the top, mainly you have only one image, you don't know what's inside the video. With our solution we can split this image between one, two, up to 16 images, and these images will move for five seconds. This allows you to have a summary. At the end, what we are doing is the same when you have a book. When you have a book, you know there is a summary and there is an index. Also, these images are an index to the video and allows you to jump to every part of that video. What's the project about? We want to make amateur sports visible. That means that people will be able to see exactly what the people are doing in their sports activity. We won't make it to them accessible. That means that they can be reachable anywhere and for everybody. We want them to be healthier. That means that we want to track and censor the system in order to allow people to know that they, when they are doing an effort in an export, if this information is recorded and it can be useful for their medical treatment. We won't need to be traceable. That means that we have to censor and analyze that data and, of course, for that, we have to measure. Which is the problem we are facing? We are facing a problem that every time there is more people doing sports and every time there is more people uh, uh, recording these videos. Obviously, you cannot, but if you have a GoPro, you can do that. But also the people that is watching the, the event or the match can do that. So there are a lot of videos, too many videos available. The problem is which one we want to see. Also, there are data plans limitations. If we want to download a video, we have to pay to the, to the telco provider. And then we realize that that is not the video we want to see. So we just lose our money. There is latency problems. There is also hardware limitations. This is the consumption of the battery. We have to make a solution for multiple devices. Mainly, you have to work with your smartphone, your tablet, your PC, your web. And also, we are not measuring the impact on health. So which is the solution? We want to convert these videos into a dynamic way of informing the, also the patient, the people who is making a sport, and the health security about how these people is evolving in their currently daily activities. And for that, we are going to use censoring and big data. So what we plan to do? If you see the video on the left, we are just seeing a normal video that someone has taken from people making bicycle. If you see the second image, we have this same video with, different, with a different approach. We have nine images. But we can not only do this for this kind of a sport. Our machine learning can be different for every sport. So we can do it for football or we can do it for chess. For example, which is the ability for football? If I want to know which is the people who has made the score, I want to know who is the best player, I want to uh, select people that is in the lower levels of uh, football teams to go to the higher levels or to, to professional, I can use the technology to find just the right information I'm looking for. For example, for chess, uh, we find an application in Spain. Uh, there is an organization that is working with blind people and people is also playing chess. In fact, they have great masters. And for me, it was shocking because I played chess when I was young. And I didn't realize they could play chess. I said, how do you do that? 
and they say, well, we, we uh, memorize all the, the positions in the, in the board, so we know how to play. But they also see videos, because they have a special devices to see these videos. And the point is, the, the problem they have is, when looking in a video, for them it's difficult to find where is the information they want to see exactly in that video, in which part of, this, of the game they want to go. And one of our points is to work with them to solve this problem. So, with this expected a come, mainly to allow people to share their relevant videos, be allowed to be in any device, everywhere, while allowing to track this healthy information and providing this information back to the person and also, if necessary, to the health security. And for that, we are going to have a great advantage because every time people is getting more sensoring. We are getting more devices, wearables that allow us to uh, record our sensorings. The impacts we consider will be in health because we are going to empower a patient role in the exercise. For digital cities, because people will be able to interconnect with the, all the different uh, sensors that will be in the city to get information and improve the model. And also, it's a big data project because the key part is measuring, analyzing, and optimizing the algorithm for each sport and activity. So we are presenting the project now. We know we are not going to be on time for this, uh, uh, this call, but we would like to present for the next call. So you are welcome to contact me at any time. Here you have my contact details. Well, sorry, first, uh, the people we are looking for, we are looking for people like with video recognition. It's our expertise, but we will, will like to have more people doing this activity. Uh, people who has information about censoring, smart cities, health organizations and hospitals, sports clubs, sector box manufacturers, and big data and analytics. In the fact, in the sector box hardware manufacturers, we have already a partner. And this is my contact details. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Oscar. Great. It's, uh, it's, it's already in a status that please contact Oscar if you want to be on board uh, for this project. Thank you very much. Actually, uh, several times it was mentioned that uh, there are calls. They want to submit pro proposals for the calls. The next call is 29 May, and the autumn call, which was also mentioned a few times, is 15 October this year. Now we come to e municipality by Mohamed Fakihi. Please, Mohamed. Um, hi, my name is Mohamed Faki. I'm a CEO of Kratos Technology, uh, a company working in the e-government field. So, uh, what we're doing in uh, Kratos Technology is that we believe that the future of e-government is in bridging the gap between citizens and their government. And we want the citizens that want to be actively involved in the government life to do it in an easy way, in an intuitive way. So, we really believe that. So, no, no kidding. So we, uh, we started a new project. Uh, it's an R&D project to make e-government a better uh, e-government for the next five years. And we started from um, a very easy and a very simple fact. E-government has been uh, around for the last 10 years. We've spent more than three trillions on e-government. And when you look at it today, it's a total failure. But at the, uh, at the basis of e-government, it's a very easy and very simple thing. What we want as citizens is to be able to interact with our government in an efficient way. We want our government to be open, to be transparent with us. And most important, we want the government and the e-government to be citizen-centric, to be around us, not to be around the bureaucracy of the government. And one of the highest and uh, the biggest challenges that we see in e-government for the last five years is that the people and the environment are changing very quickly. Every day we have new technologies. Every day we have new usages that are in place. We are now mobile, we use internet for everything, we have internet of things, we have smart cities, and a lot of things. But when we look at the application into the government and the public field, it doesn't work quite good because it's in silos. All these things are developed to some point, but they're not developed for the user. 
We don't think about the user when we start an e-government, an open data, a smart city, or an Internet of Things project. We start from the processes that are outdated to do something that will cost a lot of money, will cost a lot of nerves, a lot of time, and at the end, nobody will be using it. So if we look at Austria, for example, in Austria we have 70% of retired people who are using online banking. But we have only 15% of these people who are using e-government. But Austria is saying that they have an e-government readiness of 100%. But what's the point in having 100% readiness when only 15% of your citizens that are paying taxes are using these systems? It's just throwing money away. So what we want to do in that project is to take what has been done so far, put it together, and make it easy to use and easy to consume. So eMunicipality is a platform that sits in the middle of existing layers of technologies. Low-level layer of technologies like data. So we have government data, we have social data, we have local data in many communities, in many uh, municipalities that are just sitting there and that are not used at their full potential. And we have open data. I don't know if any one of you in this room has looked into the open data of Austria. We have you. So, so we have 5,000 data sets in open data that govern that data. But when you look at it, most of them are not usable, neither for the private sector nor for the public sector. Because they're not normalized, they're not easy to use. So every, everyone prefers to create his own open data set instead of using the open data set that has already been developed. On the other hand, when you look at the interface of the users, we have many solutions. We have smart data, <laughs> we have sensors in, on the streets, we have internet of things, everything is connected right now. We have browsers, and most of us here have smartphones that we use on everyday life. But all this ecosystem is not connected. It doesn't give us the full potential of e-government. What we want, we want e-government to be as easy to use as Google. We want it to be as efficient as Amazon. Why can I get order uh, a book on Amazon and get it on the same day while I have to wait 15 days to get a certificate from my municipality? It doesn't make any sense. So what we want to do is to create new personalized public services that better suit the needs of users. We want to reduce the administrative burden of processes for the administrations. And most important, we, need, we want to increase the transparency of the municipalities and raise the trust of all the citizens in the people that they choose to represent them. So for that, we are uh, planning to, first of all, start by analyzing what exists in the, our ecosystem by creating a directory of curated open data and then normalize the endpoints and the attributes of the open data and all the solutions that are existing in the EU ecosphere right now. Then, the next two steps would be to uh, create a communication layer with standardized format, open source, on which anyone can connect with their own devices and with their own applications. And those applications that will be created on that catalog will be then ready to use for municipalities, government, public, private, and even end users like developers and people that have some kind of technology savings. Uh, we're looking in the, for partners into uh, e-government fields, cloud technology, SaaS software, Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, and open data. Right now, our partners are located in four countries. Our target is to have at least one partner in each of the EU countries. So at least 28 partners. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, if you want to talk a little bit more about this topic, come and find me. And this is, these are my contact details. Thank you a lot. Thank you very much, Mohamed. That, that really sounds like a very gr large European world. Many, many partners yes. can participate. Yes, yes. please. <laughs> be, be part of the big family. I'm already bringing with me uh, Elena Petrova for the next one, which is about e municip No, uh, it's about smart city mo monitoring. Sorry, I was uh, in the wrong line.
Please, Elena. Hello. I should thank previous presenter. Actually, he described all problems which we are facing, and it looks like we are looking in one direction, but our solution is a bit different. And uh, my name is Elena Petrova, and I represent um, Association uh, for Sustainable Innovative Development in Economics, Environment, and Society. We are based in Austria here, and we are a non-for-profit organization trying to make the world better. So now we are supporting one of application of Fars Navigator platform for local governments and public administrations of urban areas. And our solution, our project is, is called Smart City Monitoring, and I will describe it later. So the problem is, uh, what's the problem? So that the city, as we know, is a complex system with a lot of uh, um, interconnected subsystems, to name a few, public transportation, health, gov government, uh, especially, also education, water sanitation, and so on. And uh, it's the place where many people work and pity uh, they live in the cities. And I'm afraid that uh, in 30 years, a lot of people, much more, many people will live in the cities, and this, com this uh, com um, sorry, complex will be, system will be much more complex. So, quality of life of people who live in cities should be improved and continuously, and better if uh, these improvements correspond with uh, standards like ISO 37120. It's just new standards. It was introduced last year, and I um, was wondering that uh, even local government and municipalities, they don't have any idea that such standards exist, and uh, it's very, sometimes big surprise for them. So what does city need? It needs monitoring, analyzing, planning of improvements, and of course, uh, reducing negative impacts. And sometimes we need also benchmark their achievements. I know that Vienna is the be most beautiful city in the world. I've heard that it's one of the, on the first place behind, and then goes Zurich, I think, or something else. And uh, I am afraid that Zurich and our cities would like to know on which basis Vienna is most beautiful. So our solution, I, I think, provides such, can provide such answer. So it's already available. Uh, demo can be viewed on the website. And it's available as an installation server on Ubuntu, if you need technical de details, and on, from, it clients run on common de devices. What's interesting about this, that we just uh, took standard, uh, which was introduced by ISO, and we have indicators in this standard, about 46 indicators as a core, and up to 120 supplemental, and we put it in our system, and took open data. Who said about it? It's unusable, uh, even for Vienna and, for example, in Linz. And, uh, but we took another open data, and we cannot see, uh, say, which city it is. It's imaginary, because everybody wants to be, know what, what, what's the city. And uh, actually, uh, these uh, indicators and uh, open data which we take, we took, uh, can show how is the life in this city, what can be improved, and what can be done, and citizens uh, can watch how government or municipality is doing, uh, are we transparent enough? So we offer this as a component for smart city and municipalities projects, also for partners uh, who look for joint projects in Horizon 2020, Eureka, and so on, especially in uh, future years, everybody wants to be smart, and mayors also, and communities, and uh, we would like to offer and partner with uh, city municipalities and government, co government councils, and also with uh, somebody who works with uh, such entities, uh, universities uh, who are interested in these related areas and do some researches, also national and international funding, project renderances, and so on. You are welcome to see my details, go to our website, to look for, uh, to check how 
imaginary city is doing, and maybe to apply it in your local government and community or municipality. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elena. Great. Uh, you might have heard about this Smart City Initiative by Eureka. Uh, and this is very high on the agenda, so this fits obviously extremely well into this. So please, if you are interested in this, talk to Elena. Thank you very much, Elena. Next one is about uh, domestic internet search engine by Dragan Yeremich from Fracta. Please, Dragan. Hello to everybody. I'm Dragan Yeremich from Facto. And uh, we are busy consultants. From the last millennium, I'm in telco business. Last decade, I was uh, responsible for residential internet and uh, multimedia design and uh, uh, implementing in, in Serbia. So we have some experience in, in uh, this field. Uh, we consider that now is a good time to make metadata and the uh, engine which will be used across the Europe for domestic internet search. Not every country to do this by themselves, but to make one common model and uh, to make uh, local content uh, through this model. Through this concept, uh, in a couple of years, it's possible to have better quality of data for local users. Right now, for example, there is not good uh, data and uh, customers, in, for example, in Syria cannot in Cyrillic have good search. Probably, I don't know, in Greece is the same on the local alphabet and, and so on. Based on this, the domestic search engine uh, value-added service can be done. You can, uh, based on better quality of the, of the data, you have more users. This data can be done and used uh, by the local ISPs and uh, local telcos to define what actually their customers are looking for and not just to be let's say the dump pipe, but to give more quality services based on actual customer needs. Second, the target group can be digital market industry, which can then uh, make campaigns and uh, have more quality and control on their marketing, uh, digital marketing strategies. Also other groups can be considered and included in, in the in project. After uh, making the architectural design of the prototype, idea is, as I said, to, to make uh, for each country localization, make uh, the set of partners which contribute and make uh, the better quality of, of the uh, local search. So for example, if somebody asks for internal and local uh, data, it will be provided through the local search engine. And it's, if it's a uh, use, I don't know, data from other uh, European country, it, it could be given from the partner from that country. I try to be as fast as possible. And uh, if there is question, free to open now or later during the lunch break. Thank you very much, Dragan. Uh, yes, if there is one question, you were really fast, so you could have one question if you want, uh, if there is any. No, that's, that's, no, please, you can always talk to him. You, you will be available for the whole day, I guess. Thank you very much. Now we are moving towards uh, powerful IT instruments for monitoring and management of change from Serge Kolanov of Kol Golovanov from Golem. Yes, 
Hello, my name is Sergey Galavanov. Briefly regarding our company. Company is in Austria. It uh, exists long ago. Started in 91. It's a small company. Uh, we released a uh, new platform, and this is the most important point. The platform is for uh, monitoring, analyzing, benchmarking, simulation of complex dynamic systems. This is brand new innovation, which is uh, now available. And it was released last month, actually, at this first hour presentation. It's running uh, on the website, and Mrs. Petrova presented uh, one of the applications for this platform. It's uh, implemented in cloud and has a wide range of applications, like enterprise manufacturing services, urban development, and so on. So let's briefly analyze why it was done. It was done because the change uh, in the world is accelerating significantly. And so too many events taking place, and it's not sometimes uh, understandable what's going on. So we need to manage change somehow. We need floor, understand flow of events. We need con to analyze consequences. We need to continually monitoring life quality, including the environment, and have prepared right responses. After this generic wording, we present concrete solution which answers to these issues. Mm -hmm. And this is important. This is not a generic statement. And this platform is, provides possibility to implement model of complex dynamic system, like human being, like enterprise, like city, like region, urban uh, area, or environmental object like lake, forest, and so on. Everything which can be presented as hierarchical structure with indicators presenting dynamic properties of this object at each node can be uh, implemented as a model of in the model without programming on the high level using the instrumentation inside the platform. This is example of the uh, solution for enterprise. It provides in-depth analysis of presentation of the situation with each enterprise object, including factory the whole, all production, all uh, products separately, all customers, and so on. Uh, this can be, uh, again, checked in the website as a running online model. We look for collaboration uh, with uh, the following areas. It's a wide range of applications, and we look for wide possibilities because it provides possibility to have application in manufacturing, serving provider, healthcare, hospitals, energy, environmental, compliance to standards. The system allows to support any part which related to ISO standard, which is called performance measurement, analysis, measurements, and uh, analytics. So all these chapters in the ISO standards are directly supported with uh, this system. Uh, in a uh, one of the point is that it provides quantifiable, practical sustainability definition in regional and national governance. There are a lot of conversations about sustainability for last years. However, when you ask what's inside, it's very difficult to, form to get answer. What's inside sustainable development? This system, this platform allows quantification of sustainability in each indicator, in each data source in each understanding of the state of the complex system, which is enterprise, country, city, and so on. The platform allows actually compressing information from thousands of uh, indicators, 10 thousands of data sources, like in the city uh, sensors from different places, compressing into very simple human, uh, human uh, term like good, bad, or any other word which corresponds to the definition of those who wants to see the status of this system. Uh, another application is uh, monitoring analysis and benchmarking of large, uh, large areas like Danube region and so on. So geographically distributed uh, data sources and indicators located in particular uh, data sources can be analyzed and processed automatically, uh, presenting the whole picture of the area and indicators which are defined by those who develop the model. What we look, we look for but partners in, uh, with city municipalities, for, with local governance administrations, 
enterprises which want to introduce some new technologies for quick analysis of uh, processes, universities which provide research, funding agencies, and uh, uh, of course project coordinators. We don't want to be project coordinators, clearly. And we work in many countries. This is my contacts. You are very welcome to have a look in the website because a lot of words are generic, but you can have concrete uh, test in of our system running online. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sergey. Moving on on the long list of very interesting project proposals. Actually, my dream is that we make our public authority, funding authority representative sweat because we have so many proposals and so many project proposals with good content that they have problems to find all the funding we need. Next one is a car sharing platform, which is proposed by Robert Reithofer from Ebola Mobility. He's not in the room, is he? No. Robert, you're not in the room? Obviously not. Then we move on. And this will all be on our web, as I said. Uh, we move on to the next one then. Hope I'm more successful now with uh, Mike Matten on VRT. Yes, Mike, I know that you're here because you gave me your updated version. <laughs> Okay, good morning everyone. Um, I'm uh, Mike Maton. I'm going to present to you a project idea we have around, uh, around media, context where personalized media. Uh, it's it's uh, composed uh, by me together with my colleague Luc Overmer, who is also in this room. So actually, uh, VRT, uh, as some of you might know, is a, is a public broadcast organization in Belgium. Uh, 2,300 employees, uh, several TV and radio channels and online uh, portals for uh, news and, and, and other content production and distribution. Uh, there is an in-house technology department of about 200 FTE consisting of engineers, computer scientists, uh, making all the systems running uh, smoothly. And we also have a research and innovation team, and I'm a part of that research and innovation team at, uh, at VRT. Uh, and the research and innovation team is, uh, is doing research in multiple aspects of media production and distribution, both from the technological engineering uh, side as well as from the user research uh, side. Uh, this is a high-level overview of the project ID we want to introduce. Actually, what we want to do is to build a new kind of uh, content recommendation system for the users. And a uh, content recommendation system that is context-aware. So actually, we want to combine three kinds of information. First of all, user information, like user profiles, demographical information, preferences of users, the, the typical things. Combine that with contextual information, the context in which the user is, and this could be location or uh, the, 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 the direction a user is going to, could also be weather information or other open data that's available, could be social context, uh, are people experiencing media together or alone, uh, could, be, could, be many, could be the mood of the user, for instance. So all these kind of context parameters we want to model into actionable context. And then on the media company side, uh, we also want to model the content, of course. So tag the content in, 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 a, in a good way, so, such that we have uh, good content models to do the personalization. Uh, in the middle, we want to, to combine this. And uh, one thing, as a public broadcaster, where we want to be very aware of privacy of the users. So we want to build a trust relationship. So we want to make sure that all the processing which is done to personalize happens in a privacy-aware way. And that's why you see this dashed line uh, in the middle. And in the end, we want to come to a user application with a context-aware personal recommendation system. Uh, what is the expected outcome? Well, first of all, uh, we want to work uh, together with maybe some of you on, uh, on the modeling and implementation, modeling of user context and modeling of, of uh, personal media profiles in a privacy-aware way. So we're also looking for expertise on privacy awareness of, uh, of data models. And we also, we also want to work on uh, better content tagging and profiling uh, of the content. And in the end, uh, the, the, the main outcome would be a context-aware personalized content uh, recommendation system. 
Uh, what do we need? Uh, well, uh, we would like to collaborate with, uh, with technology as well as uh, expertise providers, both from academia as well as from, uh, from the industry. On, well, I'll list some topics here, but, but it could be extended, of course, sensor devices, analytics and reasoning on, uh, on data, uh, network technology to enable uh, connections between devices, for instance, for the context awareness, we, uh, we could use that. Uh, someone with expertise on context aware recommendation technology and of course the expertise on privacy uh, and, and also technical expertise on privacy. How do you include privacy in the data modeling uh, itself? Uh, I'm happy to discuss with you. This is my contact information. Uh, I'll be around until, uh, until the afternoon and otherwise you can also drop me uh, an email. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. Great. We're coming to a... Okay, also, Mike, uh, sorry. Yeah. yeah, hello, I just have one question. I mean, you are mentioning privacy, but you are not mentioning other areas of security. Is, is this something that you consider in your project or, is, or not? Just a question. Uh, it's a topic that is of high interest to us, security. The only thing is, if we want to, to create a project, we don't want to, to extend the scope of the project in a too large way, so we could, even with the model I presented, we could take part of it and, and, and include that in a, in a research project or a Celtic Plus project or include the whole thing. But the more you enlarge the scope, the, the, the more uh, angles uh, it gets. But it's, yes, uh, to answer in short, yes, it's, uh, it's uh, interesting to answer. Security, trust, and privacy, uh, all three of them. Thank you. Thank you. We come to a double uh, pitch from Turkcell, very committed to uh, participate in future Celtic Plus projects. Now the first one is an elderly watch. Aline, may I invite you? Hello, uh, this is Aileen from Turkcell. Today we are going to present uh, two uh, ideas. Uh, first we go ahead with elderly watch. Uh, this, is a pro uh, this is the project idea we are uh, bringing together with the Koch University. First, uh, Turkcell is a GSM company uh, with uh, 35 million uh, subscribers and we are also active member of the Next Generation Mobile Network. And uh, Koch University is a very strong institution in Turkey with its research contributing to uh, scientific development on a global scale. And uh, we are working closely with uh, Technology Transfer Office, so uh, we will be able to transform this project idea into the proposal in a very quick and efficient uh, process. Uh, if you'd like to see the research uh, focus areas of the Koch University, please uh, uh, go and click a uh, search uh, TOKU-EDU-TR. Uh, the proposal is about a variable device. Uh, this is going to be a wireless uh, elderly uh, tracking, geriatric tracker and biomonitoring watch. So uh, here you will see several properties of the watch. Of course, we are not intent to include all of these features in single product, but we are aiming at uh, building a single hardware design with customizable firmware. So we will be able to support uh, several uh, features here in several uh, in a product variety. So uh, this will be uh, basically a vital sign tracker. Uh, it could be also used as an indoor and outdoor uh, tracking uh, for the elderly, uh, especially Alzheimer uh, patients. It will be able to report context in several levels of the emergency. And um, uh, we plan it to be a self-sufficient device uh, which could remove the charge itself. And of course, also we are targeting to have cognitive assessment capabilities on the device. Okay, this scope seems a little bit huge, but uh, as I said, uh, the product uh, will be in variation. So what is the innovation in uh, relation to the state of the art? Uh, we are looking for the energy harvesting partners uh, to be included in this project. Uh, we will be working on advanced fall detection algorithms, uh, which is also another uh, hot research topic in this uh, idea. Uh, we will be uh, developing sensor fusion te uh, methodologies for the indoor localization and, uh, of course, uh, techniques for the maintaining and uh, enhancing memory capabilities, which we will be doing with the adult and serious gaming uh, techniques. 
So, of course, uh, the, the outcome is obvious to be able to support the, uh, this active aging or aging problem of Europe. We will be strongly uh, giving these figures and statistics, statistics in the proposal. And then, um, yes, I mean, the goal and the outcome of the project is uh, very obvious to be able to watch continuously the elderly life. So here uh, we, uh, we have filled some parts of the value chain already. Uh, Coach University is joining this project as a system builder. And also uh, one of the key uh, note here is Coach University Hospital is also joining into the project with the vital sign tracker use case. So uh, we have a potential uh, customer here and also a test bed uh, as a hospital. Uh, Turkcell will be uh, included in the system integration and technology enabling parts. Uh, the same for the Ericsson Turkey. Uh, they will be included in the technology enabling and uh, platform uh, building parts. We have several Turkish SMEs uh, which we are working closely with in uh, high synergy. And uh, we are looking for universities uh, and institutions in the geriatric domain, uh, also the chip manufacturers and energy harvesters. Uh, please contact either me or uh, Suna from Koch University if you have any interest uh, joining this uh, project. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alin. <laughs> Moving to the second Turkcell pitch on management, IoT emerg emer emergency management. Uh, please, sir. Hello everyone, uh, welcome and thank you for staying. Uh, I know that we're keeping you from lunch, but I'll try to be fast. So my name is uh, Ali Özer Arcan, I'm from Özyen University. Uh, uh, well, Aileen has already uh, told what Turkcell is. I don't have to do it again, but uh, I'll talk a little bit about our university. Uh, well, it's a very new university, as you can see. We were founded in 2007, but it's new and upcoming. Uh, and uh, we also have uh, really good rankings in, uh, in both national and European uh, projects. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details over here. Uh, but uh, our project is about uh, you know, managing emergency situations uh, in a smart way. And we, uh, we said that uh, it's using uh, IoT. But it's not just IoT, of course. IoT and uh, surrounding technologies, I should say. Uh, things like device-to-device uh, -device communications, 5G, SDN, NFV, cloud computing, and everything. Okay, and of course, this vision is not uh, totally new. I mean, I, I found this picture from the internet, and it's uh, it's done by somebody. I'm sorry, I cannot read it, but its name over here is from uh, 2006. The resolution is kind of low. Uh, however, it's kind of I, I just put it over here to show the complexity of this uh, this thing. You know, how do you how do you manage emergency situations. But I think with the new technologies that I just mentioned, like IoT, uh, you know, device to device communications, uh, NFV, cloud computing, I think it's, uh, this vision is uh, doable today. And that's our vision. That's what we're trying to do. And as a use case, I, I just would like to uh, give an example. For example, this guy over here um, is in his, it's his home. And then there are like sensors. Uh, there could be something like the, that health watch that just Island has described. There could be sensors around him. Uh, there could be devices that these sensors and you know uh, can communicate. Uh, could be cellular. Could be otherwise. Um, and suppose this guy has a heart attack, and uh, and there are resources around. There are ambulances, AED devices, defibrillators, hospitals, doctors, nurses. You know. Things like those. I mean, th these are static sources and and uh, and moving sources, and and they may or may not be aware of each other, right? I mean, there are these sources that that can help this guy, but you know, uh, I mean, how would they know, right? So that's where we come in. So the, the the goal is, you know, first understand what's going on, situation awareness, and then second. You know, uh, come up with a plan. How I'm going to solve this situation? I'm going to, you know, uh, call this ambulance. I'm going to call this guy, doctor, from the next street. He's just walking there, right? 
and then I'm gonna you know, take this guy to first to this defibrillator device, and after that I'm gonna take it to a hospital and so on and so forth, right? And, and this has to be managed you know, online, so these guys don't know about each other, and very fast. And, uh, and what else? Um, I already said this, team forming resource allocation. And while you're executing this plan, you also have to execute it. And other things might come up, right, while during the execution. For example, the guy might not be available, right? You think a guy is available, but the doctor is not available, so you have to find another one and so on and so forth. And of course, in the process, you should learn from all this experience. And next time, you, you should do better, okay? And this is actually, of course, uh, uh, some, something that has been already uh, been um, kind of like uh, coined as like the four phases of emergen emergency management in the literature. It's, it's as you can see, preparedness, response, recovery, and mitigation. And I think our uh, proposal covers all, all four bases, okay? Uh, what kind of technologies do we need uh, to overcome such a project? Uh, I mean, these are the things that, I, that we, we compiled together, but I, I think there might be even more than this. Uh, you know, um, so it's really uh, a very multidisciplinary uh, vision, as you can see. It has big data, cloud computing, uh, yeah. machine learning, sensors, sensor fusion, um, localization is an important thing, uh, mobile computing and communication. You know, how do you how do you uh, communicate between all of these devices and the cloud? That's very important. And uh, statistical, statistical planning and matchmaking, multi-objective optimization, even game theory maybe might come into play. Uh, risk estimation on, 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 and so on and so forth. Oops. So uh, my time is up, so I just wanna, uh, so there are a bunch of challenges. I mean, I just wanna uh, mention in 10 seconds about this, but these are of course not the only ones. I mean, these are the ones that just we put together f uh, at the first glance, but there are many challenges to overcome. Up, come, and we are looking for, partners, uh, you know, who work in these fields and maybe the other fields that you might think that will be uh, contributory to what, what I've just explained. Uh, the partners can be from uh, anywhere, I mean, universities, SMEs, uh, companies. Um, and if you're, if you're open to uh, work in this project, please contact any of us uh, and we'll be very happy to talk with you. Thank you very much, Ezra. Now, this, this sounds really like a very comprehensive project, so we are very much looking forward to the proposal. <laughs> now we have two to go between us and the lunch, which is now from Alcatel One Touch, Pierre Bonnard, on five G devices test bit. Now this could be one, hopefully, which can, which fits into these five G issues we have heard in the keynote speech. So hello everyone, uh, I'm Pierre Bernard, I'm working with uh, Alcatel One Touch, and I'm <coughs> presenting this uh, 5G devices test bed. I promised three minutes, so it will be short and I hope crisp. So uh, first, who is uh, Alcatel One Touch? It's, okay. Uh, it's a brand of the TCL communication group. Um, since it acquired the uh, Alcatel terminals activity back in 2004, and um, it develops a range of, uh, of uh, products from smartphones to smart things. And it has a strong growth in the past three years and was ranked number four by Gartner at the end of 2014. Um, and the group has decided to reinvest the research area and start a 5G activity in France. And this was announced uh, back in March of this year. So what is our mission in 5G? It's to um, make sure that the technology as it is designed is made affordable and brings real value to the end users. And for this, we want to capture the end users and the devices integration constraints from the start into the device definition. So it includes uh, <clears throat> making sure we satisfy new usages as well as um, uh, are effective on costs on the user equipment design and as well battery life, which is an important factor in the in the new technology. So to do that, um, the project plans to develop an uh, open user equipment test bed. So this is a platform 
that is uh, intended to be reused by other projects, by uh, infrastructure vendors, operators, to do end-to-end -end testing on new 5G features. So uh, it needs to be flexible and scalable based on open source software and as well uh, off-the-shelf hardware so it can be reproduced easily. The outcome of that project is to uh, accelerate the, uh, the maturation of the, uh, of the 5G standard, to allow um, fast prototyping of features, as I mentioned, and we see it as a catalyst for more actual collaborative project and as well to increase the dissemination of the, uh, of the European research in 5G. So the, the project today is made of uh, ourselves, of course, uh, Sequence Communication, the 4G uh, chip maker, Euricom, and you've uh, heard about the open air interface earlier, so that's a very important uh, component in this project to uh, be based on open source. Sirtem uh, is a company uh, which has developed several uh, software different radio hardware platforms and we're seeking more partners to join us and uh, if you are either willing to contribute on the development of uh, pre-5G implementation or if you're interested to reuse this platform in your own end-to-end uh, -end testing, uh, both are possible. And uh, that's it, less than three minutes. So uh, you have my contact details here. I'm a little bit short of business cards, but uh, I'm happy to meet with you now or later on by email or phone. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Pierre. Thank you very much. Last not least, we are coming to the last one, which is about uh, transport planning and management framework. Elan Albay from Kent, E. Kent. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ilhan Alpay. I am from E. Kent. Uh, e. Kent is a smart city company, uh, which is uh, at the same time operating these smart cities, uh, city products, with the revenue sharing with the municipalities. As of now, uh, we are operating. Uh, 33 smart stadium with ticketing and all security items and uh, 22 cities uh, automated fare collection uh, and uh, we are a UITP member as of now and our project is coming from the business need that we know which is adaptive transportation and management framework uh, for the cities it is important to uh, achieve sustainable transportation, but for the sustainable transportation, city municipalities are making plans, implementing these plans to the city, uh, but uh, keeping these plans up to date and managing them is so important in order to make this uh, sustainable transportation in a continuous improvement way, you need to have uh, an integrated framework which is modular, uh, and this, our project is related with this one. Uh, and uh, as you can see in the project slide, uh, we are uh, defining indicators there, which uh, all sensors, you know, uh, like personal counters and fleet management indicators and environmental condition and driver behavior uh, and uh, in order to measure customer's experience. Uh, and actuators like uh, in order to manage the situation uh, like uh, driver consoles and uh, information screens in the bus stops, in the phone, information screens uh, in, uh, in, the, uh, in the phone of the uh, citizens, so like this and others. And uh, we are aiming to collect these data from indicators uh, this kind of real-time data and uh, plan the uh, fleet and the all uh, sustainable transportation, optimize it according to parameters and uh, manage all of these in real time and uh, adaptively uh, according to the changing situations and uh, collecting uh, in order to understand real effect of these indicators to the sustainability uh, and improvement uh, collecting all these real-time data and non-real-time data via big data, uh, big data analytics tool module 
and uh, when you understand the correlation of it, to move all of these rules to planning and control side, uh, and doing all of these uh, via uh, transportation middleware, which uh, can be inter integrated uh, to other uh, smart city middlewares that municipality has. So uh, it is uh, a product in order to integrate uh, citizens, municipalities, fleet, drivers, and all of them, uh, in, by integrating all of them, making their uh, experience related with the city better. It's our aim. Uh, the uh, aim, uh, the outcome of it is really pro productified platform because we have potential customers uh, in Turkey and outside, outside of Turkey and we know their need, what's real need. So uh, our aim is really productified modular uh, pieces which can be sold together and which can be sold indi uh, individually uh, and create uh, value for the citizens, create value for the uh, society and uh, impacts to city is continuous improvement of course management of the continuous improvements is the benefit that we are looking for and uh, our aim is to uh, start the project at the beginning of 2016 uh, with the Celtic uh, calendars and what we have what we are looking for as of now we are in the project as middleware developer and the party that knows the business. Uh, we have Korean uh, partner, which is experienced on the uh, bus computer kind of things and uh, in order to collect uh, sensor data from, uh, uh, in order to collect data from the sensors and process it and send to the center. Uh, and Anadolu Araştırma is from Turkey, uh, which is uh, experienced on the optimization kind of uh, products and control kind of products. And what we are looking for is, uh, we are looking for partners for a research company that is experienced on this kind of optimizations and the business. Uh, and uh, a company that is uh, experienced on sensors uh, for bus location and other uh, kind of sensors, localizing the bus. And uh, a company uh, for big data product big data analyzer product uh, in order to collect data from known uh, real-time sensors from all the cloud, from uh, from social media, Twitter and other uh, places and create correlation and create rules and create relations and create value for the planning and control units and uh, environmental sensors indoor and outdoor, affordable environmental sensors since we have uh, a computer in the bus uh, at the same time and uh, of course this project has social responsibility part uh, as an actuator uh, we are planning to create an actuator for the disabled people which is blinds and first blinds and other disabilities in order to uh, benefit them from the city mo uh, as much as possible or city transportation as much as possible uh, in order to productify and analyze this kind of product we need uh, another partner and uh, you can see my uh, contact information here. Uh, I am here uh, outside. You can contact me and from this uh, data you can contact me as well. Thank you very much, Ilhan. La la last but not, not the least. So. Thank you very much, Ilhan. And uh, I would like to express a thank you to all the speakers who presented their bright ideas. We are very much looking forward to receiving lots of proposals in the next calls because those are all bright ideas and um, like there are good proposals behind them. Sorry for having eaten a little bit into your uh, lunch break and sorry for having pushed through this session so much. In 2.15 we will meet again here for the session Beyond Europe. Enjoy your lunch. <laughs>